All right, it's time to talk about everybody's favorite topic, properties of real numbers. And don't worry, one day this year, we'll get into what's called imaginary numbers. But for now, let's, let's keep it real. All right, let's take a look at the real number system. Okay, we've got all sorts of different ones. Let's just look at the names for a second. We've got natural, whole, integers, rational, irrational, and those are all a part of real numbers. Okay, so everything you see here is part of the real numbers. All right, now like the most basic as I like to think about it would be the natural numbers, our counting numbers, starting with 1, 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth. Okay, they're essentially all the positive integers our normal numbers. Okay, like on our number line, if you had your line here, you know, and you had like the zero tick mark, one, two, and you're like graphing an inequality, which we'll totally get to later, and you've got your numbers on the number line, that's what we're dealing with there. Okay, our whole numbers now are basically the natural numbers, but we're including zero. Okay, no fractions or anything like that. Whole numbers are the natural along with zero. Then integers are positive and negative. Okay, but again, we're talking about, you know, whole numbers here, but we're talking about positive and negative versions of that. That's what our integers are. Now, rational numbers, those are fractions. Numbers that can be represented as a fraction. Okay, so you've got your one-half, three-eighths, so on and so forth. And then we've got our irrational which are basically numbers that cannot be represented as a fraction. Okay? You cannot write the square root of 2 as a fraction of two numbers. I mean, you can't even know 4 over 3 would not give you the same as root 2. You can't represent it as a fraction. It is irrational. Okay? That's soups exciting. So irrational numbers basically have their decimals that go on forever and ever and ever, and they don't repeat. Okay? Irrational numbers have decimals that just go on forever to infinity and beyond, and they don't repeat. Rational numbers either have a decimal that will end, for example, one half is just 0.5, or let's say two thirds over here, right? That's like 0.6666, and it goes on forever like that. It's a repeating decimal. Cool? So that's our awesome, awesome. Numbers, the real number system. Okay, moving on. So here we're going to classify each system these guys are in. Okay, and let's do it, so you can pretty much list, there might be a lot of them that they're in. Okay, but let's go with the most specific one that they're in. So for example, the first one, three. Well, that's obviously everything's part of the real numbers, right? But most specific would be the Natural. Remember, those are the ones that are like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so on and so forth. So it would be in the natural numbers, it would be in the whole numbers, the integers, the rational, and the real. Cool? All right. Feel free to pause the video at this point. See if you can answer 2, 3, 4, and 5. I don't know why these got moved way over here, uh, but this is problem number 4, and this is problem number 5. Cool? So see if you can give me the most specific family that would be in, okay? All right, if you haven't paused it, but you need to pause it, make sure you pause it now, otherwise I'm going to go over them. Negative 5. My most specific would be integers. All right, integers for that one. So it's negative. It's one of our counting numbers, basically, but it's on the negative side of that number line. It would also fall into the rational numbers and the real numbers, but most specifically, integers. All right, negative 1 fourth. That would be a rational number. Rational. It's a fraction, so it's a number that can be represented as a fraction. That would be my rational numbers. Obviously, it would also fall into the reals. All these fall into the reals. All right, square root of, t square root of 4. Well, normally we see this, we're like, oh, square roots, that's got to be irrational. But doesn't the square root of 4 equal 2? And 2 is a natural number. So, yes, we do need to simplify if possible. This one here, if you remember back to rational, or sorry, when we're talking about uh, radicals, well, square roots, we can simplify those. So if you break it down and do the prime factorization, you could take out the pairs. Well, then I'm going to have 2 
square root 2 because I had that 2 that was left in there over here. Well, 2 root 2. Well, I know that square root of 2 just goes on forever and no, never, never ends. It doesn't repeat. It never ends. So this would be an irrational number, okay? Irrational for the square root of 8, which simplifies down to 2 root 2. So irrational. Awesome. You guys are doing great. I love it. All right, hopefully you did well on that one. So ordering real numbers. Now, this can get a little bit tricky at times. Okay, sometimes it could be helpful to use your calculator. I like to basically convert things to decimal first, and then it's really easy. Ooh, sorry, yawning. Ah, oh, man, I'm already tired. So it's really easy to see it when it's written as a decimal. So we look at 8 thirds, because obviously 1 is just 1. 8 thirds is roughly 2 0.6 repeating. And remember with the repeating, you put a little line over it, that means that it's repeating. Okay? The square root of 6 is roughly 2.4. It's like 2.4494, so on and so forth. And negative 4 fifths. Well, that's negative, and 4 fifths is like 0.8. Cool? So 4 divided by 5, if you didn't know that was 0.8, you can always plug it in your calculator, but that's something that you probably should know. So negative 0.8, and make sure that decimal point is a little bigger so you can see it. Okay, so now let's order these. We can do this on a number line. Okay. Well, let's see here. I've got 0 here. I like to just always write down 0. Negative 0.8, that would be right over here. And then we've got 1 would be my next one. And then let's see here, 2.6 repeating or 2.4? Well, 2.4 is going to be next. And then 2.6 just after that. That's 2.6 repeating or 2.67 or 2.7, depending on how you round it. Make sure you always round it correctly. But there we go. Negative 0.8, 0, 1, 2.4, and 2.6 repeating, or the 8 thirds. Awesome. Great job, you guys. This next question asks, what two signs should we use to compare real numbers? Well, really, we're talking about which one's bigger or smaller or greater than or less than. So our greater than or our less than sign. And obviously, if they're equal to each other, we'd put the little equal underneath it. So you'd have like this or this. But usually, they're going to be different. All right, so square root of 26. Remember, we're going to want to convert that to a decimal. So you'll want to use your calculator, and that's about 5.1 when I round it to the nearest tenths. Okay, because it's 5.0990 and so on and so forth. All right, so 5.1 is less than 6.25. Boom, there we go. We just compared them. Or if you want to go with the original, square root of 26 is less than 6.25. And in our final answer, we should probably have this here because that's the original problem right up there. So square root of 26 is less than 6.25, but it's easier to see if you are to convert it to a decimal first. Time for some properties of real numbers. I know you all love properties, and we're not talking boardwalk and park place, you know, monopoly properties. We're talking math properties, the fun kind of properties. Alrighty, so the commutative property. Basically, it means you're able to flip it so A plus B is the same as B plus A. Same with multiplication. A times B is the same as B times A. Q, cool. associative, based on grouping. So A plus B done first, and then adding C is the same as A plus while doing the B plus C first. Okay? So addition, the associative property that says that those are equal no matter how we group them. And the same goes with multiplication. And it's kind of like how you can really do them in any order, so it makes sense that if I were to group them first, then it wouldn't change. Okay? The identity property. The identity, identity property basically just means that it's the same as the original. So a plus 0 is, the, is equal to a, and 0 plus a is equal to a. Okay, So adding 0 doesn't change it. That's what the identity is for addition. Adding 0 doesn't change it. Well, what doesn't change multiple, when you're multiplying? Well, if I multiply something by 1, it's not going to change. 8 times 1 is 1. 7 times 1 is, sorry, 8 times 1 is 8. 7 times 1 is 7. You know, 32 times 1 is 32. So a times 1 is equal to a, or 1 times a is equal to a as well. Inverse. Basically, we're talking what undoes it. Well, what undoes addition is subtraction. If I take a number, 5 minus 5, I'm going to get 0. a minus a equals 0, or a plus a negative a equals 0. And then if we look over at multiplication, well, what undoes multiplication? Well, it's division, okay? Or multiplying by a fraction, as we know. 
So a times 1 over a is equal to 1. Remember, if, if you were to write out like this, it might be easier to see. If you put that a over a 1, well, my a's cancel, and I'm left with 1 over 1, which is 1. And it says here that a can't equal 0. Well, why can't a equal 0? Ooh, are you allowed to divide by a? No, you can't divide by a. That's why a can't be 0, because if a were 0, you'd have 0 in the denominator, and that's a no-no in the math math. Cool. Last thing, distributive property. We'll deal with that a lot, especially when solving equations or simplifying expressions or multiplying them out. It basically says, I'm going to take the a, I'm going to multiply it to both of these. So something that you would often see would be like 3 times x minus 2. You would just distribute your 3, and you'd have 3x minus 6. That's what distributive property is. And you can obviously reverse that as well and call it factoring, right? Or you could have the a on the other side, as you see here, and the a would just get distributed into both of those. Okay? Really, it's all based off the fact that, like, addition and multiplication, they can go in any order, and it doesn't change. So let's identify some properties here. If you feel like you got a handle on it, you want to just try them first, hit pause, and then hit play when you're ready to see the answers, because I'm going to go over them right now. So you have the ability to pause it, but you don't have the ability to pause in class, but you have the ability to pause on video. All right, the first one. I have negative 2 fifths times negative 5 halves. Well, that's going to end up equaling 1, and I know that's the multiplicative inverse. All righty. So basically undoes it, right? Now the next one, I have 4 times 5 times 3 equals 5 times 4 times 3. This one's a little trickier, because you, so you see parentheses, so you're thinking the associative property, but it's not. Focus on in what's going on in here. We have 4 times 5 and 5 times 4. That's reverse. That's the commutative property. All right, so this is commutative. And this was the identity. Sorry, inverse. All right. Number three here. Well, this one looks like I'm distributing that three to make it look like this. And I'm thinking this is just a, a bit of a typo here with this H. This should be a G there. I think it's just a typo. I missed that. Lo siento. Okay. That means I'm sorry in Spanish. So this is the distributive property. All righty. So distributive. And then number four. We have 4 plus 0 equals 4. Well, that means it just didn't change. It's the additive identity. So this is identity. All right. Cool. Any questions? <laughs> you can't ask questions right now, but you can in class or even online in a discussion. That's always fun. And that's all she wrote, folks, so, you know, enjoy doing some practice problems and things like that because you'll want to get this down. We love this stuff. This is super important.